just to be the Scorpio like my son. So let me talk about the sun sign right now. Scorpio in itself is in many ways judgmental in that one says I know what I know and therefore I believe what I know before I believe someone else. But there's another sign to Scorpio which is a Scorpion that it, for example if you put a ring of fire around a Scorpion rather than burn it will sting itself to death. Right. And so symbolically you could kill yourself emotionally, mentally or physically on some level because you failed. You right. weren't successful. So that's just your sun sign. Alone. That's why I always tell people you can be your, your people are their worst enemy. <laughs> they can be their worst enemy. Right. Now your rising sign is Leo, and yes. Leo, in, in terms of Scorpio, it's it's like a, a wide angle, and so that gives you opportunity to grow and expand and become much more than a very limited Scorpio. So what? The rising sign in Leo gives you is the outward personality. You're able to go out to the world and stand up and do what you do and talk. And you're happy camper when you do that because you're yes. getting a, a sponsorship or a supply of people who are saying, I recognize you know what you're talking about. Right. And so that works very productively for you. And your moon is in Scorpio. Now, yes. moon in Scorpio can make you doubly emotional. So yes. if you fall in love, you've got, you, you lost control. I do. You know, and and you just absolutely 100% I love you completely and utterly yes. and then when they turn around three months and walk away it's like how could exactly. you be so soul destroyed exactly. you know? so what we're saying here is you rush too fast yes. into a relationship yes. where you need to spend more time knowing who you are and what you like and what exactly. you want to do and this time now you know, okay, I'm looking, you've been on your own a little while. When I say a little while, by spirit's point of view, it's a little while, but you're starting to think it's a long time. But what they're saying is you needed that time to process. I did. Uh, and when we look back to the past relationship, we see misunderstanding, misunderstanding, misunderstanding. So we have to come down into Mercury for that. And I'm looking at Libra, and that's the scales. And that person they want you to know is in your life to upset your scales for you to learn this lesson not to rush in more full speed to go you know kind of thing and uh you know leo the lion is like i'm the proud uh, i i need the pride i i'm the leader okay but why are you leading yourself into hell <laughs> as right. it were? Uh, because love is saying oh there she is oh this is wonderful you know now i can also tell you you have male female energy by this yes, so you can be as feminine as you want to or it can be as masculine as you want to so that's that's good there um the scorpio it being you know with the moon and your sun sign is very much i am who i am and don't ask me to be a sagittarian or a cancer or something else whatever it is okay your mercury is in libra and that means libra is the scales justice and mercury is I, I need to know, I need to learn. It makes you inquisitive. Is this right or is this right? Exactly. And if this is right, how come this is wrong? Because I need to have them parallel. I need to have them equal right. in some way. So you're not satisfied with just the knowledge. You want to place it in, in balance with everything else in your life. And if you get a tiny bit off balance, right, you're troubled. It worries you, you know, because Mercury is like, have you learned your lesson? And then we'll go down into Saturn in a, in a minute here. So Saturn is in Aquarius, and that's always, Aquarians are always technically supposed to be thinking about the future. But a lot of times Aquarians will be drinking a beer uh, and thinking about the future and like, oh, you know. So, and I know right. I've got two Aquarian sons and I had an Aquarian husband. Right. So, and my mom was a, is Aquarian, she was drinking. <laughs> Okay, so what we got here with Aquarius basically is tomorrow, tomorrow, the sun's going to come out tomorrow. And, and what they're saying here is that motivates you to keep going in the times yes. you're down and depressed and miserable. Yes. You've had a lot of depressions. Uh, Jupiter in Pisces is like saying, 
every person out there is my friend. And of course you give your heart and soul because Scorpio wants to be liked and then you find out they've done the dirty on you. So why would that happen? That's to make you realize that, you know, that there needs to be light and dark in you and there needs to be light and dark in the world, which I was talking about the other night. And so uh, where Mars comes in in Leo is it gives you that dynamic uh, to be able to see the fuel that lights the fire and know whether it's something you want to be involved with or not. And many a time in your younger years, teenage years through 26, 28, you were diving in and getting burned. <laughs> and so you were learning the hard way, you know, fools don't rush in. Remember we said that before with the lion. Fools don't rush in. They stand back and observe and watch and learn. So you went into a learning mode. And Uranus there in your years as you evolve. Virgo, you know, is the, the virginity, the balance, the harmony of that masculine feminine energy. Here we see a relationship that was good but it was terminated and it was terminated for a reason that person was in your life to get you to understand you have to find that balance between your masculine and your feminine energy so the more there were i feel like you're a woman pulling pigtails and they're doing this with you all the time. it's like this way no this way no this way yeah. <laughs> so you, didn't, I feel you know that. you know and so that's that's been a very main trigger throughout your life yes. to teach you Keep looking here, keep looking there, keep searching and keep finding you in other people, in more situations, in more circumstances, whatever it is. So you're learning through the people you meet in this world and with the Mars giving you the dynamics of the energy of Leo, you know, you can be very sensitive to perceptions, to people, but the but you're the king of the castle. <laughs> You won't be in charge because that Scorpio is always going to be in control because it's a big sign. Okay, um, so with uh, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn, what they're talking about here with Leo, Pisces, and Aquarius, it's always pushed you towards what's tomorrow so that you can't get stuck in history and go over and over and so you're able to carry your load and then all of a sudden you get it and you dump it and you're afresh you start over so that's good for you um okay so we're going back up to neptune we got neptune again in scorpio so you've got venus moon and neptune degrees 13 19 where is it well, oh, right on top of one another. What year were you born? 62. Okay. So, but that gives you... Okay, a stellium. Yeah. Scorpio. Right. And so with Pluto and Moon and Scorpio, the sun sign, there's a lot of power there. That gives you power of the healing hand. It does. That gives you the power of the soul to bring down and, and give to the world news that nobody else knows. Yes, I do. You like me, right? Yeah. I don't have it that way, but I, I get it. Uh, okay. Now, if we go into your houses, your first, second house, Okay, because of the ones on one's just six degrees and the other is on the other end seven degrees, so twenty seven degrees. So you've got a gap in the thirty degrees here. So what that means is that uh, um, you're fluctuating between your first and second house. Your ego wants to be known, but your pocket wants a penny. So right. you've had a separation here between what you earn and what you keep. You exactly. can make a fortune and lose it, you know. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's you're learning because of the other one with um, down the bottom. It's in the where is it? Uh, Scorpio is in. What did I say? It was in uh, nine tails, ten tails. Got three Scorpios on the pink floor. Here we are, Neptune. Okay. Neptune is the veil, remember? You can't see the wood for the trees kind of thing. So when, when you got those earlier years, you were making money and losing it, thinking, oh, I'll put invest in that, or I'll go on a holiday and do that, and blow it all, and I'll make more money, and you come back, and everything you thought was solid, because Neptune's made it disappear. Okay. And that basically made you realize that whatever you do in life, it's transitory. 
So you're moving. You're constantly moving. I, I am. That's true. Okay, with with the Venus in Scorpio too. Um, then we talked about that the heart and you know being hurt and so on. But you know the Mars aspect, Venus and Mars always go together no matter where you are, however angles it is. Um, so Leo and Scorpio, you know, it's yeah. a big strong thing that you can you can bulldoze someone. Yeah. You can roll them over and they'll go like, he's fantastic, what happened, I don't know. And then yeah. at the same time they can also be going, what did you do that to me for? Right. I'm not ready for that. Right. You know, so sometimes you overstep the mark and sometimes yes. you're just giving them more than they Too need. Yes. So you have to, to, to watch how, how you share yourself. Sure. But for yourself it's good because it doesn't allow you... Uh -huh to be bulldozed by the people right <laughs> you know so you you've got your head screwed on right um okay and of course you get very, on very well with jupiter i don't know i've said that i'll come back to your houses so with leo if you're in your second house you're like me if you meet up with the right people you can make a lot of money if right. you're getting with the wrong people right. you go down the drain right. okay that's why i want you guys to have my astrology to see when is the best uh, time to do something together yeah. well we're all gonna have similar patterns because right. we've all learned the lesson the yes. hard way if you know what yes, I mean. yes exactly okay um with your main sun in energy libra actually the fourth house you know is very much the self the the i am in that sense and uh, with Libra, and we talked about the scales and trying to find that balance. The harmony of the I am is I am a physical body, I am an intellectual person, I'm an emotional person, I'm a spirit, I am a fragment of the oneness, I am the I am, I'm the soul. And you're learning that through this life as I am. Okay. Uh, fifth house, Sagittarius, fire. Um, what you what you need with the fifth house is to understand your creativity goes with the moods because you're Mars and you're know, about to go to the planets, but understand I'm just doing it really quickly. Um, if you're in the mood of you want, um, shall we say, a new television, then you're ardently out there looking at every television in town wondering which one is the best one and you could get confused because you're seeing so many you don't know what's going on. And this blue fire Sagittarian energy comes in there to say what feels the best take that one work, work with that one it might break on you but it doesn't matter because you you made a choice so this is teaching you in the fifth house through creativity how to make choices your sixth house capricorn again we go over to scorpio and we go to to your ascension and all these things the angles that making me do it very quickly um choice is tested time and time again to see if you believe in yourself mm -hmm. and what you're doing. And the minute you have the doubt in Thomas, mm -hmm. you destroy yourself. Yeah. So you've learned the hard way. Trust you. Trust right. what you're trust doing. Trust myself. And the sixth house being Capricorn is earthy, grounded. Career. Be practical about it. So it's like if you invent this, God knows why they're showing me this, but if you invent a, a paint roller, you've got to go and register it as you invented it, exactly. not give it away. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the symbolic I've made symbol. Some, I've, I've invented things that I haven't patented. Okay, well, that's, that's funny then why that. they're saying that because exactly. they know and I don't. I'm just channeling. I, okay. I've invented medical tools and, and I haven't patented We'll have to talk about them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been working with a patent company for my crystal acupuncture and stuff. Wow. It's quite expensive. It costs a lot to invest, wow. but it'll go in Walmart, it'll go in sure. Amazon, it'll go everywhere eventually, but that's not me. Uh, okay, so Capricorn here and also with your Leo um, gives you that fire and that passion to be an inventor. And Libra is like, whoa. This, you know, I saw that and that didn't work. I could take that idea and fiddle around with it and I could make something else. So that takes you into the Aquarian in the seventh house, which is your descendant, which is opposite the other side of your, you know, your ascension. So you're looking at what goes wrong rather than what goes right. Oops.
my hair this week. <laughs> Just when she says that too, what goes wrong? <laughs> how? how? Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's like, you could go, let's say you're going to the hospital and you're watching someone being treated for something and it's not uh-huh. working and you come home and think, well, that's silly. Why don't they realize you could do this and this? Exactly. Yeah. And I do that all the time. Yeah. And, and so that's your healer. That's your counselor. Yeah. That's in your your makeup. It's, it's in your seventh house, which is relationships, which is people. Oh, oh. Uh, so it's across the board who you meet, how you think and what you do. In your eighth house, Aquarius is also there, and you've got two planets, which you can remember. Oh, wow, here. two planets. Saturn, uh, in, 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 in. Oh, you got three. No, I'm back in the houses. Where is it? Where is it? I've got two houses, but I need to find it. Saturn. It's your ascension. Okay. So, uh, in terms of opposite dissension and your, your and Saturn, okay, dissension is the other side of your ascension. The so we're talking about my ascension control. was Leo. Yeah. So, so descendant go... pushes the web to your in your mind, right. the web of your mind, into the eighth house where Saturn says, "What have you learned?" And how can you push that over to your ascension uh, and give it out to the world with the shining right. personality right. that you have? Okay. Um, your ninth house, Pisces, is your contemplation, your meditation, the death of the old you, the birth of the you, new you. So you can have acute depressions yeah. and, and feel like the end of the world's happened. But at the same time, you have, because of your Scorpio, you don't want to give up, and because of your ascension uh, and the descension thing going on here with lessons and Saturn and Aquarius, you are going to find another another hole to investigate. Yes. It's like you've got to go down the rabbit hole, I do. and you think, where am I, what am I doing? And then you realize, hey, this is a whole new world, just like Alice, you know, right. but it, you come out of it, and then you uh-huh. realize you've got a new beginning. Wow. Okay, I like your guides, they're very precise. Oh, good. Uh, the tenth house, the mid heaven, is all about the essence of your what you come here for to do. And you, you notice that's in Aries, and Aries is drive, it's dynamic energy. Which planet is this? This is your mid heaven, and this is Aries, the house mid-heaven of Aries. Aries. Mid heaven. So if I go back okay. up to Aries. No, I just never heard of that uh, um, term, mid heaven. I don't think you've got anything in Aries. Huh? Yes, yeah, finding yeah, myself. No, you okay. don't have anything in Aries. Like me, I don't have anything in Aquarius. You don't want anything in Aries, which is your right. heaven, yes. because you want to be open book to receive. Yes. And so Aries for you will bring you more fire, more because it's a fire sign, more energy to heal people. Good. It'll give you more energy to talk and give your lectures. Yeah. It'll give you more connection with the archangels, the yeah. ascended masters. Uh, I have Aquarius in, in my mid heaven, which gives me the intellect, which is why I can write so many books. Yeah. Okay. Um, the eleventh house, Gemini, is it's like the um, backlash. It's like the people behind you who support you and give you a direction, a, a clue, a motivation. It also means it, you get the dark side of the oneness <laughs> and the light side of the oneness. So you can see earth bouncing people and you can see the archangel sector, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's your psyche. That's where your psyche is coming in in the 11th house. What's in Gemini? How am I doing for time? She's still talking, she? Is she doing? Oh yeah, you're doing time. Just don't know. Yeah. You're doing fine. What time is it? Uh, 4.50. Oh, that's not the time. Uh, one fifty five. Well, I'm still on Eastern, Eastern time. Yes. No, you don't have a planet in Gemini. Again, okay. that's good because yeah, you can't be complicated. So I mean, here's the dark, this, here's the light, and, right. and the where it comes in in terms of the planets is Scorpio again, and the balancing, the tides, the strength, and so on. Good. So these are the angles. Your 12th house is Cancer, which is why you're born with me, um, because I'm a Cancer sun sign. Um, 12th house gives you 
an awareness of all that is. It gives you a sense like you're here. So family you home, focusing like on cancer. something over there, but you're also aware of what's going on over there. Right, right. right. So you're you're having a round and about awareness. Exactly. And that is your paternal aspect, the father figure, wow. cancer in your case, I'm the yes. mother figure, because I'm female. Oh, but that doesn't mean that you're all male. Because right. I said earlier, balance. You, you're balancing that, you're yeah. learning I try to about balance. that. Your spirit guide who works with you uh, is... Do you know their names? It's uh, the one I'm talking about, the, uh, but he just said something. You are an anomaly. He wants you to look up that word. Anomaly, yes. Anomaly. I'm an anomaly. Because you don't fit any... I don't. Yeah. Seems I've been to told me. that. You don't fit anything. And there's quite a few of us down because yeah. we're here to do something. Um, the one that's talking with me is... Andreas Astorus. Wow. He's Greek. Andreas Astorus. Andreas Astorus. Andreas Astorus. I'm spelling it. A N D R E A U S A S T O R I U S. Thank you for being a great guide through my life. You were his son in Greece. Wow. And in the spirit world, you asked him to be your protector, your guardian. Excellent. So, so he works with you. You could call him Andre. <laughs> Andre. Good. <laughs> Good. I resonate with that, Andre. Okay. Um, standing behind him is Red Cloud. I have Red Cloud. You have Red Cloud. Oh, wow. Red Cloud Good. is, he was last in embodiment uh -huh. with the March of the... I didn't even know that. He came to me when I was seven in England. Wow. And all I knew was cowboys and Indians. Red so Cloud. I love, I resonate with the yeah, Indian culture. Cloud. White Eagle, you've got two. Um, you've got... Uh, White Eagle. You've got Gaia. You've got... Gaia. Uh, Kuan Yin. And other Kuan words. Yin, yes. You've got Michael Archangel. I'm going yes. up here. It's like, what am I looking? I'm not looking yes. at anything. Yes, Michael. Uh, my, Michael. Um, oh, you need to open up to... Um, you haven't embraced Raphael, and you haven't embraced... Raphael. Raphael, Archangel Raphael. Yes. I, you haven't embraced that. Um, I will. I'll look into Raphael. Yes, I have a very fat book somewhere. You, they want you to read that. Raphael. Raphael, it's all about the Archangels, okay. the oneness, the creation, the word. Okay, yes. Um, you don't have to have it now. Because I'll it's buy a, it it's from a you. Book. It's got $35. Um, and that's cheap. <laughs> Yeah, I'll buy it from you. Um, um, um. Even you though I, I'm asking if they want me to look anymore at that, and they said, no, this is enough for now. Um, How about the dolphin? You have, I, I you swam have with a the dog dolphin. on the other side. I do. They, they're showing me it's brownish. So I can't see it properly. Black and brown. brown, right. Brownish and something. Yeah, okay. Right, they buddy. Want, they want you to know that it, they've got it. That's buddy. What it, buddy, okay. I think. Yeah, I can tell. It's quite size. Is it buddy? Yeah, it's a quite a size. Like, it's a big dog, Buddy. Yeah. I think it's Buddy. His name I is Buddy. The tail. the tail's dark. I loved you, Buddy. He was a great dog. Yeah, he was my yeah. first big dog. Yeah, I could see the tail's dark. That's why I could see brown here, and somehow it changes. And it it's got up. red underneath the black, which makes it brown. Yeah, don't tell me. Never tell yeah. me. <laughs> All right. So they want to see the dog. Your grandma is also here. I know and that. And she says she's always following you around. She's very proud of you. She is. Uh, and uh, she's very close to you. She loves you. Oh, good. Okay. Is so my Norwegian um, grandmother uh, or my Iranian grandmother? Norwegian. And, well, wait a minute. No, they're both there now. <laughs> they are. Yeah. But you didn't know the other ones so well. I didn't what? Know the other ones as well as you Right. Yeah. I do. You're yeah. right. I didn't know my Iranian one as well. All right. So you got that. Um, anyone else? No, they're saying that's enough for now. Excellent. Okay. How about a dolphin? I swam with a dolphin in in Santa Monica for an hour, and I've been told that the dolphin is following me around, a great spirit dolphin. Mm. And Well, yeah, there's, the dolphins are intellectual, and they are Well, I mean one dolphin, aware one dolphin one, that I call. You were, you were out there unexpectedly, right? Swimming, yeah, and came to you, yeah. Yeah. What happens is the one is... But I was friends with no, it let for me, many let years. Let me yes. explain. What happens is the spirit guides bring an animal to you 
right. to give you comfort in a time when you're in misery. Right. And you're in misery when you had the dog, and you're in misery when you had the dolphin come to you. Right, I and did once. So they were using a, an animal to heal you yes. and get you they to... they did. They did. Yeah, that's why. But no, that dolphin is not... They yeah. live to be 45. Wow. That dolphin is not around now. I know it died, and then now it's with me all the time. Yeah. Well, I've it's been not told. swimming. What you have to understand right. is the dolphin is an Arturian. Wow. So the Arturians can be anything. They awesome. can appear right before you right I've been now called and disappear Arturian. in a second. Do you know what I am a really Arturian? We're Arturian. I think so. And Syrian. And Sirius, and yes, I've been told that. And Lyrian. S yes, and Lyrian, because and I'm very back feline. Even further, they, we don't, yes. We can't say what we are because. All those we're three founding, things are the ones I've been told. We're founders of this earth. Yeah, I've been told that. She knows that already. Sirius B. Yeah. yeah. Enough. They're saying enough. Enough, enough. Excellent. More later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh my God. That was.